Thank you, hello everyone. Uh, as, as you can see, uh, there are two names on the slide. Uh, the first one is Manuel Reis, our pipeline developer. He's hiding somewhere in the room. He, he should upload, and then you get to upload louder, of course. Uh, maybe we can give a try. Manuel? Yeah! Great! <laughs> Thank you. And my name is Mathieu Rey. I am the founder of Tu nous as pas vu. Uh, tu nous as pas vu is a French company with a strange name. In fact, this name uh, in English uh, means you haven't seen us. In fact, it's a long story. I don't have the time to, to explain you all the stuff, but believe me, uh, you'll find it's a fantastic name. <laughs> okay. Um, we founded the company uh, a few years ago with my partners, and uh, I'll tell you just a little about the company, and then we go uh, Blender. Uh, it would be short and very efficient. In fact, it all goes on this paper, so no problem. Um, so, <laughs> we founded the company in 2010 uh, with my colleagues uh, Thomas and Mark. Uh, and actually, we are working, we are 40 people working in the south of France. And we used to work uh, on other software than Blender. So, for example, we worked on White Fang, the feature films, where we made the animation of the dogs uh, on Maya. We also worked on Marona's Fantastic Tale. Uh, it's a feature film too, and we uh, animate 20 minutes of uh, the movie on TV Paint. We then worked on the TV show Les Legendaires with our uh, colleagues from Cube Creative. Uh, it was uh, 26 episodes of 22 minutes on 3ds Max. And then we decided to test Blender, and we did it on this project. It's a small project called Two Birds. We produced it, and it's now uh, finished. Uh, it's in festival, actually. It's living its life. And actually, it is the first Blender project we made at the company. And so we built our pipeline and our tools on this project to test Blender and to, uh, to decide if, it, if it's a good software to go on. Since then, we never quit Blender, and we are actually producing many projects. The first one is Pachyderm, another project with great artworks. Uh, it's made with Blender too. It's a short movie. We are working on Billy. It's a road movie, a short movie too, on Blender, with a very strong uh, artistic uh, sense. We worked on Mr. Hamster. It's a TV show too. Um, actually, we made the trailer of this, and uh, it's planned to be a, a TV show of 52 episodes of 11 minutes. And the last, but not the least, we are working on Team Dronix, which is actually broadcasted on French television. It's produced by Technicolor, and we are working with Micros Image in Paris with this. So, you know, we, we, before uh, creating the company, we were 3D teachers, and we used to work on Max and Maya, so we, we teach Blender, uh, we teach, uh, oops, sorry. Go back. Sorry for that. Uh, so we have a long past with other softwares, and uh, we are proud here to show you a little demo only made with Blender. So all the projects you're going to see here are uh, made with Blender.
Thank you so much. Uh, as we were a, a small company a few years ago, um, we were all, only a few people, but the, the pipeline has always been a priority. So we decided to develop our own asset manager, a standalone asset manager. But the choice of the main DCC was a real matter. And you know, we used to work on Max and Maya and other softwares, and you have the choice to, to keep your own knowledge and, and keep your habits or to change for another software. And um, on, one, on one hand, actually, you, uh, you lose your habits, and uh, you lose uh, a Maya viewport that is quite efficient, uh, and you have sometimes problems recruiting because not all of the schools are, are, are teaching Blender. So uh, a message for the schools, you have to teach Blender now because it's happening, and uh, you get to, to teach Blender a lot more. Um, on the other hand, you have a very light and stable uh, software. You have uh, standard uh, functionalities uh, in open source. You have the freedom to have the code source and to uh, do whatever you want with it. Uh, we can replace Windows by Linux when you're not on 3ds Max, and we can invest more in humans instead of software. But the main thing is that you can work with the best developers here and to, to certainly have the best community of all of the softwares. <laughs> so thank you, thank you all for that. Uh, it was a real decision maker. And so thank you for all your investment in Blender and, and in the community. We are very proud to, to be part of it. Here, we're going to try, we're going to, try to, to, to talk about integration, actually. You know, when you, uh, you have to deliver 22 minutes of animations every two weeks, you, have to, you get to have a very, very strong pipeline. Um, and, of course, it's possible to have a, a strong pipeline when the, the, the transfer of information, of data, of assets between the tasks and between the software uh, is easy, or at least possible. And it's the case with Blender. Um, so, actually, we are working with Blender as a main DCC. As you can see, we, are, we also work on other softwares. Blender is used in the assets for modeling, rig, and the texturing is done in Substance Suit, and the rendering and shading is done using Gary Render. For the shots, the set dress, the rig export, the rig, the layout, and animation is done in Blender. And then, thanks to Alambic, we can send whatever we want to Gary Render and then to Nuke. So uh, it's working great. We deliver the episodes uh, efficiently. So everything is fine. E if you want, I can t uh, talk about you about one sequence. Uh, of Dronix. Thanks, Tom, for this photo I uh, took uh, in Annecy. So, I'm going to show you a final sequence of seven shots of Dronix, and then we talk about how we do it, and uh, how we transfer data, how we integrate things, and how Blender is working with our asset manager. So, the final sequence. is this one. It's a redundant sequence. Uh, so it can happen maybe one every two episodes or uh, once per episode. So uh, the animation can be duplicated between the shots and of the other episodes. Just have a look at this small sequence. Team Dronix, mode action! Okay, it was very, very short. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, to talk about this shot, this particular sequence, 
Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, one person in, in tu nous as pas vu. Eileen is our layout artist. And the first thing Eileen has to, to do when she arrives at the, the studio, after, of course, taking one or two or three coffees and a breakfast, <laughs> uh, she has to log in in the asset manager and uh, to look for the sequence uh, she has to work on. So here is the interface. She has to look on the sequence. Actually, it's a 220 in layout. OK, she found the sequence and she drop it into the browser view. And here, she's going to ask our asset manager to prepare the scene. So we made uh, execute actions. Execute actions are available for every task during all the pipelines. We have execute actions for the animation, for the model, for the uh, ev everything, uh, the rendering, the compositing, everything. Here, what is happening? Eileen just asked to prepare the layout file. To prepare one layout file, you need to import the latest, the latest versions of all the rigs, the cameras, the sets, the, the sound, the lip sync files, everything. So here is the scene being built in Blender. So actually, Eileen has nothing to do. Thanks to Blender code, we can prepare all of this in an automatic manner. So it's quite efficient. OK, our scene is now ready. She can try to make our layout. So to do this, of course, you have to uh, tell uh, Vantu, the name of our asset manager, yet another weird name. It's a wine name, in fact. Um, <laughs> so um, you have to tell which assets, which sound, which files must be imported in the layout file, uh, and then uh, it will be prepared. So the production team just fill in the production tracker, maybe a Kitsu, shotgun, or whatever. And thanks to that, you can have a graph view of the, um, the tasks. In orange here, you can see that all the rigs are in present in the scene. The characters are up and the backgrounds are down, all in a set dress. If we're looking to um, one character, one main character, you can see the pipeline. And actually, the first one in deep purple here is the model. The model is done in Blender. And the modelers here uh, just use the standard tools because everything is here in Blender. So no problem, no plugin, no additional things, only polygonal modeling. And they can even sculpt, if needed, they can even sculpt in Blender and save the file. Then push it back to the asset manager to publish the file and to make it available for the next steps. The next one, in pink, purple, whatever, <laughs> is the model export. Here, no artist needed, just a technical task. So the asset manager uses Blender code and clean up the scene and export in an, an automatic manner all the files we need for the next steps. So in the model export, you have one Blender file, which will be sent to rigging, one Alembic file for shading, and two OBJ files. One OBJ file in low polygons, and one OBJ files with all the multi-resolutions and all the uh, subdivisions to bake the maps we need for substance. So when we're not going to talk about uh, how we paint it in substance or, or whatever, or what, what we are shading or doing in shade uh, in Guerilla. It's not the, the place to, but we can talk about reggae. Actually, the rigging is done in Blender, and you have two choices. When the Blender file that had been cleaned and comes from the model export, you have two choices. If no skin is needed, you just link the file, so keep the reference. If there are changes of modeling, there is a change in modeling, the rig is already impacted, so no problem. If you need, it's, it's OK for all the drones here for the TV show. It works very, very fine. So you make proxies, and you link the proxies to the armatures, and everything works. 
if you need to skin the scene uh, for characters, of course you can't link. So you have to, to import and to append the modeling file into the Blender file and do your rigging actions, make the armatures, skin, etc. So here we needed to, to develop tools in Blender uh, to, to make the life of the rig artist easier. In fact, when you have a model change or uh, some stuff, adding one props or something, you can just click on one button and everything goes well and the rig is up to date. Again, in orange, one rig export. Here, no action needed, but there is something happening here because we are uh, using one very, very great functionality in Blender. It's the capacity to import only the groups of one file. So, in fact, for Buck, the main character of the show, you have one rig file, and in this rig file, you have many groups. One group for Buck with helmet, one group with Buck the body, with backpack, with no backpack, with swimsuit, or whatever. And everything is just separated in groups. And at rig export, the asset manager just takes the groups and splits all the files and generates all the variations of your model. So you have to maintain only one file of rigging, and all the seven variations will be always OK. And these things is just impossible in other software. So thanks, Blender, for that. We are using 2.79 here. It's uh, better in 2.8, so we, we need to <laughs> go Blender 2.8. So uh, as I was talking, I think Eileen has just finished our layout. So we can ask the asset manager to make a preview. So here again, we decided to, to, to make every task is an asset. So the preview file is an asset too. You can ask the asset manager to make the preview file. What happens here? You execute the file in the asset manager, and it opens Blender uh, in command line, and it just makes a play blast of your file, and then save it. And you can push and version and maintain all the, the, the versions of your play blast and add notes to them if you need. So here is the layout file. OK. So it's quite simple. You have only the timings, no animation here. And the seven shots are done in one file because we are making the layout at sequence, uh, in sequence. Let's talk now about animation. You go, our lead animation here needs to work on the green shots. So one layout file just generates seven shots in the asset manager. So thanks to the Blender code and for uh, the, the actions and all these things, it's quite easy. You just split all the cameras, all the timelines, and everything is set up uh, in an automatic way. So you go just have to lock this file to grab it, to put it in uh, on his hard drive and to work on it, and then to execute the file. So in animation, the execution, just take the layout, import the layout, link the layout in the scene, and just as in layout, it's import the final rigs of the uh, needed for the show. So you go only have to here open the shot and Again, thanks to the, the way of Blender of uh, working in animation, it just has to put the action. It just prepared on previous shot because it's a redundant uh, shot, and to put the action on the right character. So it's quite easy here. I will not show how we I mean, uh, how is Hugo is animating, but um, actually 
no, no, no mystery, no magic wand, just time, and you, you take controllers and you, you animate. Okay. And in Blender, even with three or four uh, characters, it's going well. We are maybe at 20, 25 frames per second, so uh, it's quite efficient. Once again, let's see the final result. Team Dronix, mode action! Okay, so uh, actually, going Blender for us was a real, real big change because we were working on other softwares, and now maybe 70% of the people in the in the company is working on Blender. Uh, you can have a switch of your budgets, the money you didn't spend, you you are not spending anymore on softwares. You can spend it in humans, in developers, because I think you need developers when you want to, to do some TV shows or some uh, art actions. Uh, and um, we can invest also in other uh, open source projects. One other thing is to, uh, I think, the, the, the software uh, leads us to this. I think there is more cooperation between the studios working in Blender, and that's thanks to the community and the, the, the spirit of, of Blender and of open source. One last thing, because I think I have two minutes remaining. Uh, there are two, uh, two things uh, important here, and thanks to the Blender code source and the access to the code source, uh, all of these things uh, have been possible. Uh, so we developed two, two things in Blender, uh, in the code source. The first one uh, is the use uh, of um, environment variables of all the assets. Everything that is linked, you know, it has uh, a path, and this path uh, is always uh, A2, A2 points or G2 points. And when you work between more studios than one or two or three, it can po cause problems. So we decided to cut this out and to make an environment variable and to uh, make Blender read this correctly. So uh, this thing is uh, available and we spread it n without uh, any problem. The second thing we, need to, we needed to, to develop using the Blender code source uh, was more complicated uh, because we needed to transport uh, custom attributes in the Alembic files. Because we are using uh, an external render engine, Gaia Render, we needed to uh, rebuild the scene. The shading is not done in Blender. The texturing is done in Substance. All the maps are published on the Asset Manager, are available for the other uh, um, tasks of the pipeline. So we plug it automatically under Blender for animation purpose, to, to make the animators see the eyes directions and animate full characters with textures. But nothing is done in Blender. We need to rebuild all of the, um, the shading in Guerrilla Render. So it was made possible thanks to the, just this uh, custom attribute that is now uh, possible to transport in the Alembic file. So thanks to our developers to make that possible. I think I'm over. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you have any technical question, just ask this guy <laughs> there. <laughs> uh, he can answer all, all of your questions. And uh, I'm going to sleep now. Thank you. <laughs>